When we start a fight, we like to know what we're getting into, and that we stand a pretty good chance of coming out on top, which is why you won't find me being anything but respectful to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. If you're watching, sir, thank you for your many fine movies. That's why it's such a bastard when you're squaring up to a video game boss who seems like they should be a pushover, only for them to suddenly transform into something you wouldn't want to fight, even if it were blocking the exit to a movie theatre showing one of Dwayne The Rock Johnson's films. Which, again, all excellent. Anyway, here are seven transforming bosses who certainly didn't look like that when we decided to fight them. Enjoy! Can't see how killing the president is good for the country! The president's dead? Well, we have Leon to thank for that. God damn you, Simmons! Dispose of them. The Resident Evil series is no stranger to transforming bosses, although most of the time said transformation just involves them getting eyeballs where there really shouldn't be eyeballs. Like, can he see out of that? Seems like it would be confusing. However, the record for most transformations has to go to Derek Simmons, the antagonist of Resident Evil 6, who's been trying to create a clone of Ada Wong and gets a syringe full of C virus in the neck for his troubles. She got me. This virus is powerful stuff, apparently, because Derek's DNA goes absolutely haywire, which is bad news for you, because now you're no longer fighting a C-suite executive, but rather a C-virus monster, who first attacks you as a snarling, skinless, saber-toothed tiger, <laughs> before turning into a kind of big cat centaur, Come here, see things. And when that doesn't work, he tries turning into a dinosaur. And then the big cat centaur thing again. He's still alive. And finally, a huge monstrous fly. Helena, what's going on? Hold on, I'll take care of it. Like, pick a lane, Derek. You're all over the place. Literally, in this case. Beasts all over the shop. You'll be one of them, sooner or later. Pretty much every enemy you encounter in From Software's gothic souls em up Bloodborne looks like something you'd find drawn in blood on the walls of a Victorian insane asylum, so when you first square up to early game boss Father Gascoigne, it's kind of a relief to see that he's pretty much a regular dude. Sure, he's a bit dishevelled and looks like his breath smells terrible, but Gascoigne is a hunter, same as you, so on the face of it, this should be a pretty fair fight, right? <laughs> And for two-thirds of the fight it is, even though Father Gascoigne has succumbed to his bloodlust and has some extremely nasty weapons and attacks, the two of you fight on equal footing. Reduce his health enough though, and all that changes as Gascoigne suddenly detonates in a cloud of black smoke and transforms into a ferocious beast-like creature that can pounce huge distances, totally shred you with his terrible claws, and smash through anything he feels like. You, usually. Poor creature. You would throw away hope. Well, I will free you before you can drown in your sorrow. It is better for you to die in hope than to live in despair. Let me be your liberator. Final Fantasy is a series known for its intimidating bosses, but at first sight, Lady Unaleska from Final Fantasy X doesn't seem all that intimidating, especially as you seem to have interrupted her halfway through getting dressed. Don't be deceived though, because Lady Y is one of the toughest fights in the whole game, thanks to her transformations that you definitely won't see coming. After her relatively normal first phase, Lady Y decides that standing around here in her underwear isn't getting the job done, and so transforms into her second form, in which demonic tentacles lift her into the air. As if that
that wasn't enough, her third phase ditches her original form pretty much entirely, letting it hang out on a hair platform high above the fight, while the actual fighting is done by a hideous Medusa-style face and vicious hair snakes down on the ground. No wonder she didn't have time to finish getting dressed. Doing her hair must take hours. Man struggles to understand one another. You can only truly know a finite number of people within your lifetime. But humans disregard this fact and try to know more people than is possible. Only by comparing yourself to others can you define yourselves. Thus, your ever-present anxiety. High school was tough for lots of us, for lots of reasons, but most people's experiences are going to pale in comparison to the kids from Persona 4, whose high school days included, but are not limited to, bodies hanging from antennas, accidentally entering a TV world, and worst of all, having to go camping. At the end of all this, your plucky band of traumatized teens has to face off against the final boss, Izanami, who starts out looking like a fairly normal-looking woman, even if she does have red eyes, an evil dead voice, and for some reason, six collars. Humans ache to expose their suppressed sides, while the prying eyes around them are curious to see them lay bare. After a brief bit of expository chat, Izanami starts hovering, which is generally considered a bad sign, even if you aren't in a JRPG. Unfortunately for you, you are. And this is when Izanami transforms into a giant bandaged, straight-jacketed mummy thing with floating hair and too many collars to count. Knowledge of the truth is not everything. You'd think the straight jacket might slow her down, but Izanami is more than capable of kicking your ass like this, hitting you with everything but the kitchen sink and plenty of lightning attacks. Still, this is probably it for transformations, you're thinking, at which point she decides to show you her true splendor. And when a JRPG character starts talking like that, you know you're in for a rough time. I am a god. I'll teach you the truth of your minuscule existences. That's right, Izanami is now transformed into a third form, this one a red skeleton thing with absolutely loads of arms to smack you with. And a new attack called Thousand Curses, where these demonic arms drag you straight to hell. Not a chance! So when you put it into perspective, I guess my school, making me run cross-country every Thursday in winter, wasn't actually that bad. And now, this boxer needs no introduction. That's because I am your next opponent! 2000's Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2 for the Sega Dreamcast had you fighting against a colorful cast of boxers, ranging from cowboys to Hong Kong action stars to a literal boxing machine. The game also featured some real-life figures appearing as fighters, including Shaq, Bill and Hillary Clinton, and Michael Jackson, none of whom are particularly known for their boxing prowess, but who are more than capable of kicking your ass here. <laughs> Most surprising of all these fighters, however, is the game's final boss, the championship fight of the game, the mysterious Rumble Man. Through your single-player journey in Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2, you'll be announced to the ring by Michael Buffer, a real-life boxing announcer best known for his catchphrase, after which the game is named. When you show up for the final fight, your opponent will be nowhere to see, at which point it becomes apparent that the fight is going to be against Buffer himself, and it's going to be a lot harder than that sounds, because that's when he transforms into the terrifying Rumble Man. Uh, let's get ready for Rumble Man! Ah! Buffer no more. Just me, Rumble Man! Standing 8 foot 4 and weighing 510 pounds, Rumble Man is a giant with power to match, making this easily the hardest fight in the game. <laughs> Except possibly the fight Michael Buffer is going to have trying to return his tuxedo to the rental place after this. That thing is ruined. There are a few
few characters in gaming with a bigger disparity between how threatening they look and how threatening they actually are than Flowey, the main antagonist of smash hit lo-fi RPG Undertale. That said, it's not like Flowey tries to hide his true nature. At the very start of the game, the first character you meet is this talking flower, who initially seems friendly and helpful, only to attempt to murder you some 30 seconds after you start playing. Flowey remains a thorn in your side as you travel through the game, but you'd be forgiven for thinking, despite his scheming and deviousness, he isn't much of a threat, on account of how he's literally a small flower. That is, until you get to the end of a neutral run of the game, at the point in the story when Flowey absorbs the souls of six humans who fell into the underground in which the game is set. Not only is Flowey now super powerful, but he's also gotten rid of your save file to stop you being able to reload to prevent this from taking place. And then, to really underline just how screwed you are, he transforms into the most terrifying thing in the entire game, Photoshop Flowey. This hideous mishmash of plant life, meat, organs and technology takes up three quarters of the entire screen and is most definitely not effing around, blasting you with flamethrowers, projectiles and damaging twisty vines that'll all destroy your health faster than one of those sandwiches Elvis used to eat. Still, at least it can't get any scarier than this. There's some comfort in that. Oh, a screaming human face. Guess I was wrong. To make things even worse, if you do manage to best Photoshop Flowey, he just reloads his save and tries again. Which is cheating. Unless I do it. Then it's fine. You and me, then. Together, we can go save Rose, and then we can use her to grind Miranda into paste. My daughter is not a weapon. F you. <laughs> Last chance. You don't want to find out what's in that hole. I'll take my chances. You're a few. Perhaps the most striking thing about Resident Evil Village is how deeply strange its villains are. Well, that and how absolutely wrecked your hands get. This rogues gallery of weirdos is introduced early in the game in a memorable scene when they all have a massive bickering argument in front of you and you realise you're now at the mercy of a massive vampire, a gross fishman, some sort of haunted puppet, and at first glance, the most normal of them all, a regular looking guy with a big hammer. Shut your damn hole! And don't be a sore loser! Go find your food somewhere else. This is Karl Heisenberg, one of the four lords of the area and owner of the Heisenberg Factory, a big industrial complex where he's apparently churning out cyborg soldiers with drills for hands. Naturally, you're not keen on that, so it seems clear that you and Heisenberg are going to come to blows, especially after he dumps you into the basement of his factory and makes you fight a bunch of his drill-armed guys. But you're probably feeling pretty confident about your odds, because at this point you've fought tall vampires, fish monsters, and, well, fought is the wrong word, but survived a giant horrible baby. I think one guy with a hammer won't be too much of a problem. Especially because right before the fight, Chris Redfield shows up to give you a go-kart covered with guns and chainsaws that he, I guess, made? Whatever, thanks Chris. This is going to make things a piece of cake. You're like a goddamn cockroach! Think you can take me on? Except for the fact that when you show up to the boss arena in your little gun go-kart, it becomes clear that Heisenberg has been busy preparing too, and has in fact transformed into a gigantic human-machine hybrid resembling an enormous cybernetic lizard, which was a surprise, if I'm honest. <laughs> now instead of one big hammer, he has a giant buzzsaw for a hand, and the power to control magnetism, pulling steel plates towards him to create a shield, and launching you high into the air so he can wail on you at his leisure. <laughs> it's almost enough to make you miss the terrifying baby. Almost. 
So those were the seven most extreme boss transformations in video games that we didn't see coming. Have you got other suggestions of your own? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to read them. And if you enjoyed this video, please do check out some of the other videos on the screen right now or check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash OXclub to support the work we do here at Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.